Hello everyone! Hello! Hello everyone! <laughs> so the sewing tutorial that we are going to do today is for these harem trousers over here that Chloe is kindly modeling for us. They are a very fun and easy project for beginners. So if you want to have a go and see how I put them together then please keep watching! For the harem trousers today I have picked this pattern from Mini Crea. They are a Nordic company and they do children patterns so I would recommend having a look at them. Uh, they are all very cool. This pattern in particular offers different options so you, you can see all of them here. The one I've picked for today is the very first one which has uh, cuffs at the ankles and a ribbed waistband. There is also an option for patch pocket but also the real thing, the side pockets. But because I am sewing these trousers for my daughter who is one year old, I'm pretty sure she won't need any kind of pockets. <laughs> and also I wanted something very quick and, and easy. So these trousers require four pattern pieces. Uh, we need a front, a back, we also need leg ribbing and a waistband. One thing that this pattern doesn't do, uh, like many others, is including the seam allowance, which is a bit annoying, um, but it is the way it is and uh, this will be an extra step you will have to add to the process. But I'm going to show you uh, what, it sh what it looks like on a couple of the pattern pieces. Um, so for example on the front piece, um, this dotted line is the line that I've traced from the actual pattern. Um, and to this line then I have to add the seam allowance. The pattern is going to uh, tell you exactly how much um, and where you have to add it. So for example, this pattern piece is going to be cut on the fold. So on the fold line, you don't have to add any seam allowance. You will have to add two centimeters on, uh, on the line at the top of the trousers where, where the waistband will be and at the bottom where the hem, where the hem will be. Um, and then you will need to add one centimeter on the side seam and one centimeter in the inseam. It will be the same for the back. Once you have done that you will cut out the pattern piece on paper and then uh, you can place it on top of the fabric and then it's just time to cut out. I'm all ready to start cutting my fabric. I just wanted to show you that both the front and the back are cut on the fold. So I have folded my fabric uh, on itself and I've placed the pattern pieces on the actual fold. Uh, so when I'm going to cut it out and open it, then the pattern piece will be double. waistband and the leg ribbing I'm going to use actual ribbing you could also use the same uh, fabric that you're using as a main fabric that would be completely fine but I found this beautiful pair of fabric so the ribbing and the main fabric which is a kind of sweatshirt kind of fabric in the same color uh, and I really liked it so I just went for it also, another thing that makes a difference in using the ribbing for uh, waistband, cuffs and also neckband is that the ribbing is very stretchy and is a lot stretchier than the main fabric so in the actual sewing process then uh, it would be easier. Um, but it would be totally fine to use the main fabric too. So in the same way as we've done the back and the front, the waistband is going to be cut on the fold. So I have folded this little piece of my ribbing in half and I have placed my pattern piece at the very edge uh, of it. And then the leg ribbing doesn't need to be cut on fold, but uh, we need two pieces, of course. Uh, so I have folded in half this little uh, scrap of fabric that I had, but I'm going to cut it all the way uh, around it. Now that we have all our pattern pieces cut out, we can get to the sewing bit. 
So I'm going to remove all the pins from my uh, pattern pieces and then I'm going to put one of them, so this is the front, I'm going to put it with the right side facing myself and I'm going to put the back on top of it with right sides uh, together so and with right sides we mean the sides that are going to be on the outside of the garment so I'm going to place them on top of each other and I'm going to pin them in place Perfect, like that so now we are going to sew them together and we're going to sew the side bits and the inseam uh, following one centimeter as a seam allowance. Okay, so now we have to prepare the waistband and the cuffs. So I have removed the pattern pieces from them and I've, if we start from the waistband, so I'm going to fold it in half with right sides together and I'm going to pin it in place and I'm going to do the same for the cuffs always right sides together like that now that they are ready I'm going back to my machine and I'm going to stitch them together on the row end So we are now going to fit the waistband into the actual trousers. So what do we need to do? We need to take the waistband, fold it in half with wrong sides together. You can also press it with an iron if you find that useful. And I will press it gently like that. So the technique I like to use uh, to fit the, any waistband or cuffs, any ribbing, is the quarter technique. So I'm going to divide the waistband in four equal parts. And I'm going to do that folding in half again, pinning the four reference points. So, and then I'm going to match the first one with the one that we've just marked like this and finding the other two ones also I like to usually put a red pin in the one where the seam is because that will remind me that it has to go at the back like that so our waistband is now ready to be attached, but I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the trousers. If I open up the trousers, I already have the first two reference points, which are the ones where the seams are. And then what, we, what I can do is to fold it in half, match the two seams, and then align the row edge of the fabric all the way to the front like that and I'm going to find the third point and then I'm going to do the same and I'm going to find the back so I will mark it with a red red pin in this case the two pieces the front and the back are very similar but the front is slightly lower so I know that uh, because of this, I know that this is going to be the back. So now that I have marked my four points, I can attach the waistband. So I can pin the waistband uh, inside the trousers. So because we have to sew, usually, <laughs> right sides together, I'm going to place my waistband in the inside of the trousers. I just have to match the points so I'm going to start with the back like this so I'm going to make one pin and put it in place and then I will do the same for the front I actually quite like using a, rib ribbing, a ribbing fabric 
for waistband, um, cuffs and necklines for example because the ribbing is usually a lot stretchier than uh, the main fabric so which makes this process a lot easier. Uh, you can still do it in the main fabric of course but I would probably recommend because in this case you can see that the waistband is a lot shorter than the trousers so the ribbing in this case is very stretchy so I can stretch it that far and it will do a good job but if you are using the main fabric and the main fabric is not that stretchy you might want to cut the waistband a, bit, a little bit longer than the actual pattern but if you're using a, a ribbing material then it's going to be absolutely fine so because you now see that we have a lot of left fabric in excess I want to at least put an extra round of pins in the middle of the four parts. So I'm going to, for example, the first one, I'm going to stretch the two pins that I have put in place and I'm going to, to try and match the row edges and put another pin in place in the middle. Like that. So when I'm going in my on my sewing machine, then I will only have a little bit to stretch, and it will be a lot easier than stretching all the way like this in this case. Okay. So now the waistband is in place and is nice and tidy. I can go on my overlocker and sew it together. The seam allowance in this case is two centimeters, so you will have to adjust your measurements. Here it is, the waistband attached. Uh, of course, it will need a good press with the iron, so uh, all these waves will <laughs> go away. And now we can do exactly the same thing for the ankle cuffs. The technique is going to be exactly the same, it's just that the pieces are a bit shorter and smaller uh, but really it's going to be the same way so I'm going to fold them in half find the floor reference points and doing the same on the actual cuffs in here and then sew them together cuffs are attached as well so I'm going to give the whole trousers a good press with the iron and then I'm going to turn them inside out I have given them a good press so now it's time to turn them inside out so I think it's now time to call my beautiful model and see how they look like ha! so there you have the harem trousers on the model finally this is Chloe my daughter ciao hello yes yes harem trousers as you can see they are a bit baggy but I kind of like this style and also they will last for a bit longer than only a two weeks <laughs> so hope you like the tutorial if you have any questions please let me know and that's it for today so hopefully we will see you in the next video bye bye thank you for watching bye 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 bye